Welcome back, guys. My name is Patrick, a.k.a. The Oilers Fanatic, and this is The Oilers Rundown. First up today, just wanted to wish a happy birthday to the great one himself, Wayne Gretzky. He turns 61 today. So, happy birthday, Wayne. Thanks for the memories, and thanks for putting the Oilers on the map. And we thought today might be the end to the Evander Kane saga. It continues, but it does look like it's inching towards its final conclusion. We got multiple reports today. First up, this report from Darren Draeger with TSN. As Evander Kane awaits word from the NHL on further suspension or not, the Oilers' interest in the power forward remains strong. Sources say Kane met with GM Ken Holland and head coach Dave Tippett earlier this week to discuss his fit on the team. Oilers one of two teams in the mix. He later added, Sources say the NHL decision on Kane's status could slip to tomorrow. Ryan Rashog of TSN had this update. Assuming a decision comes tomorrow, sounds like Kane could be ready for games as early as this weekend or early next week. Sources say he has been skating for a week or so in Vancouver. Contract details need to be buttoned down, but strong sense Edmonton will land him. And then Kevin Weeks of the NHL Network had this update. As the NHL investigation is reaching its final phase, sources tell me that Evander Kane's camp have notified interested clubs that it's down to two teams. Bearing any last-minute change as of now, the Edmonton Oilers are the likeliest destination for Kane. So, guys, it's looking like the Oilers got him. With all these reports, it doesn't look like there's a suspension coming. So, we may get an official Evander Kane announcement tomorrow. I really hope so. I'm really tired of <laughs> reporting on Evander Kane's speculation. Would love to just get an official confirmation one way or the other. Can he become an Oiler? Is he going to be going to the Washington Capitals, who are reported to be the other final team in on him? As all these reports suggest, it looks like he's going to become an Oiler, but don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I want official confirmation from the Oilers. Evander Kane signed on the dotted line. The Oilers did make some moves today that look to be clearing the space for Evander Kane to become an Oiler, though. Ilya Konovalov was assigned to the Bakersfield Condors, and Kyle Turris has been loaned to the taxi squad. With Kyle Turris being loaned to the taxi squad, that frees up $1.125 million on the cap for the Oilers, which should be enough to bring in Evander Kane. His reported contract details that have been kind of leaked out before, don't know if this is official or just speculation, would be that Kane is signing a one-year $1.5 million deal. So it should come in somewhere around there. And like I said, with tourists going off the cap, that should provide the Oilers the space they need to sign Evander Kane. If you're in the camp that doesn't want Evander Kane to be an Oiler, I definitely sympathize with you. I get your reasons why. I've come around to the fact that I think Evander Kane can be more of a help to the Oilers than a hindrance. If this was a case of Evander Kane signing a five-year contract, I think my feelings would definitely be different. But this is half a season. If it doesn't work out, it's going to be a low cap hit. Half a year, the Oilers can bury him, do something else. They can, If he's proving to be a problem with the Oilers, the Oilers can easily get rid of him. So I think it's relatively low risk, high reward. Could all be for naught. Evander Kane could be a Washington Capitol tomorrow, and it's completely a moot point. But like I said, we'll see what happens, and we wait Seattle Kraken GM Ron Francis spoke today, and he said he's listening to offers on pretty much anybody on his roster right now for the Seattle Kraken. There are a few players on there that I would definitely be interested in. Defenseman Carson Soucy, for one. He would be a huge help to the Oilers. He's got a couple years on his contract, so Ken Holland wants guys with term. Goaltender Chris Drieger is another name that's come up quite a bit. Although Drieger is having trouble staying healthy this year, and he's not having the best save percentage either, so... But I heard lately he's kind of started to come around. Chris Drieger is a guy I really wanted the Oilers to go after in the offseason. I was really disappointed when he ended up with Seattle. But who knows? He's a goaltender with terms. Ron Francis is saying he'll listen to all offers. The Kraken have Philip Grubauer on a long-term deal. So perhaps the Oilers could land Drieger. We'll see what happens with that. A lot of Oilers fans want Jordan Eberle back off the Seattle Kraken. Can't say I see that happening, but... I wouldn't be opposed to Everly rejoining the Oilers, but like I said, I don't see that happening. And with him, it might be harder to fit his cap hit in anyway. We also know the Oilers have talked to the Philadelphia Flyers about goaltender Martin Jones, but a few people have brought up 
went about goaltender Carter Hart. The Flyers are going to be doing a bit of a retool. I don't know if Carter Hart will be made available. I kind of think he won't be, but if the Flyers are willing to move Carter Hart, I think the Oilers should at least inquire, see what the price would be, because he's a great young prospect. I know he struggled a bit with the Flyers, but maybe a new team brings him around. But yeah, I think that's all for now, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Will the Oilers land Evander Kane? What do you guys think? Do you want Evander Kane on the Oilers? Let me know in the comment section below. If this is your first visit to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. Thanks for being a fan. Have a great night, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully with some big Evander Kane news. Take care, guys.